Hello, my name is Nicole Schaefer Crane. I'm the Executive Director of the Kauai Humane Society and I'm here to talk about pet preparedness or how to pack your pet go bag. I'm specifically going to be focusing on dogs and cats today. So if you're wondering why I didn't talk about a terrarium or toilet paper, that's why it's strictly going to be dogs and cats, but I'm happy to take your questions outside of that afterwards. So first things first, um, before we even pack anything up, the number one thing you want to do is make sure your animal is microchipped. Not just because you're legally required if you live here in the county of Kauai or in Hawaii, but because it is one of the best ways to get reunited with your pet if it's lost. So please microchip your animal. We do it here at the Kauai Humane Society for only $20. And if your pet is microchipped, but you're not sure what that number is anymore, come to us, we can scan it, or you can go to your vet, we'll scan your pet and give you that number and help you with registering it in case it isn't already. So that's the first step before you do anything is please microchip your animal. Second step, keeping your animal vaccinated up to date. This is important because if you do have to evacuate to a shelter and there are a bunch of other animals in that shelter with you, the risk of disease increases for your pet. So making sure that they're updated on their vaccines is going to keep them safe and healthy because the last thing you wanna worry about in addition to everything else is now a sick pet. So microchip, vaccinate, and the third one is a buddy system. I know it sounds silly, but we're not always with our pets. Maybe we're at the doctor, maybe we are taking a vacation and things can happen when we're not home. So it's really important to get a buddy that knows where your go bag is and knows how to get to your pets and help you out. So get, get someone, whether it's your neighbor or someone on the other side of the island, someone that can get to your home and get to your animals, but a buddy system is really important. So those are our top three. Now we can start packing. So I know this looks chaotic and that's why we're doing this because this can be quite overwhelming. And I'm only going to be talking about if you have one cat and one dog. So if you have multiple, you need to times everything by how many pets you have. So what are we going to stick in? So you can go buy these fun little bags. Um, they're great if you have a cat or a small dog or only one pet. As soon as you start multiplying these supplies, this bag isn't really that great anymore. But the benefits to it is it does tend to come with bowls. And these little food storage containers. So there are perks if you want to get something that's already set up for you. Next easy option, drawstring bags. Fabulous, simple, cheap. We probably have 12 in our house from everything. So these are really great to hold all your supplies as well. And then if you have multiple animals or larger animals, so your supplies are larger, backpacks are great. I personally am a backpack person. And I will be mentioning a couple of my personal preferences when I'm going through these things. Just keep in mind that my personal preferences, um, other people might have other things that they prefer. The one thing I will not suggest are these. These are great for grocery shopping or doing any shopping. I don't recommend you packing your pet stuff in here. I say this only because they fall over and things can spill out. You really want something that is zippered and secure, thing um, that rain can't get into. So I don't recommend going this route. So once you pick out your bag, I do highly suggest of everything here, because I'm sure most of you already have this in your home or you can find it from a friend, is that if you don't own one, buy a waterproof bag. This is the one thing that I'm really gonna push for purchasing because it's gonna keep all your documents really safe and documents are very important in emergencies. So inside, and these are super cheap by the way, they're a couple bucks on Amazon. So inside, you're gonna want your vaccination records just in case you need to move your pet maybe off the island or you need to board your pet. This is really handy. Next, you're gonna want your feeding instructions for your pet. I know you're thinking, I know how to feed my pet, but once again, if your buddy is picking up your pet, they may not know. So feeding instructions and if there's any medication that's going with your pet, how you're medicating too. You may also want to write any emergency contacts 
on the sheet of paper as well. The next really big one is photos of your pet and you want them to be very clear. You want as many images of them as possible looking at you from the side. If you have a cat, um, you know, they have all these great stripes and stuff, really get a photo of that. One of the things that we saw, especially with Maui, is maybe your long-haired cat after the fire is now a medium-haired cat or a short-haired cat because its fur got singed in the fire. So it's gonna look a little different. So these patterns on your dog and cat are gonna be really important to help you because we're gonna be stressed or in panic mode and our panic brain does not work the same as our logical brain. So give yourself as much help as possible. And I would make lots of copies of these. So you can leave them at the shelter, you can leave them at a vet's office or a clinic or um, a humane society so they can help find your pets too. So I suggest lots and lots of copies of these. And then finally, going back to that first step we're taking is a microchip card. Make sure you know what your animal's microchip number is. This is very important. Um, and this is what's gonna help you guys get back together if you were separated. So that is our bag that we are definitely going to buy and own to keep all of our documents waterproof. So let's start with cats. So we know what our cats need, right? They need food and they need water. And you're gonna pack somewhere between three to seven days of both. Now, as you're packing for yourself, of course, you can incorporate your pet's water into the water for your family. Um, but just make sure you're packing enough pet food. Now, I know this can has a wonderful pull tab. That's really great. But pull tabs fail, and the last thing you want to do is try to figure out how to open up a can of wet food with no tools around because you didn't bring anything. So really pack a manual can opener. Um, it's going to help you out, and I hope you never have to use it. I hope the pull tabs always work, but they don't. As well, you want a measuring cup with your feeding instructions, right? You can get one that actually has dimensions or just a plastic cup. Because once again, your buddy's going to need help feeding your pets. Then you need to put it in something. Whatever bowl your cat is comfortable eating out of, you can do a double where you either do dry food and wet food or food and water, or you can do these collapsible bowls. I mean, they save a lot of space, so that's the benefit to them. Um, they're pretty small. You can hook them to cages if you're dealing with a wire cage, so that's really nice. The next big thing is the bathroom, right? It's a cat, so you're gonna need your litter. And then you're gonna need something to put your litter in. So you can use the litter box you're familiar with, buy another one like that. Um, they make these great paper ones. So once again, a nice easy packing situation that pops right up. You can go buy some cooking pans. These work great too. Um, and then I was actually just recently introduced to this myself. It's a fold up litter pan and it just folds out. And it actually zips up too, which is really cool. It has a little lid on it. And so you can seal it up when your cat's not using it and then open it when it is. Um, so I'm kind of fond of this now that I found it. Then you want your litter scooper, not a necessity. You can use waste bags instead, but this is how you like to touch it. Here you go. When you're doing your litter pans, I do suggest lining them. Um, just, it's gonna help you with the cleaning, it's gonna help the smell. Um, so they do make bag liners. Um, another option to go with, and I personally think you cannot pack enough pee pads, are pee pads. So whether you're putting them in the back, in the bottom of the carrier, to absorb maybe spilled water, or putting them in the litter pan um, to keep it clean, help with moisture, um, pee pads are great and really diverse. Next, you're gonna want some fun stuff. You're gonna want some toys, not new toys. You want toys that they are used to playing with, have their smell on them, have their home smell on them. That's really important to cats and it makes them feel comfortable. So toys that they already own. The same goes with a blanket, um, something that already has all the smells that is not stressful to them because we're trying to provide comfort. Now, I'm sure your cat is already wearing a collar um, with the tag, so you're going to be packing a spare. I remember when we had our cat collars, 
we have quick release. So make sure you have a spare one of these with the tag on it, just in case. And then finally, if your cat is on medication, make sure you're bringing that. Now that's clearly something that's not going to live in your bag. So once again, our panic mind is not our thinking mind. Maybe you put a big tag on your bag that says, remember the medicine, um, so you can grab it real quick. So that's cats. Um, let's talk about dogs now. It's all very, very similar with just a couple adjustments. So once again, we have our bowls for food and water. I do not particularly use these for my pets, um, only because my pets have a tendency to move bowls around and these will topple and spill everything out. So I tend to go with more flat bottom, um, but once again, that's just my personal preference. Then you're gonna have your food and your food's gonna maybe be different depending on what size dog you have. Um, we're packing three to seven days of food, so if I have a small dog, I'm gonna have probably less than if I have a big dog. And if I have multiple animals, I'm probably gonna have a lot more of this. Once again, let your buddy know how much they're supposed to be feeding. And then, treats. Treats are very important. If your cat is a treat cat, pack those as well. But for your dogs, treats are great things that they love. Um, you either be giving them just as treats or if they're not eating very much, it might be a way to entice them into eating their food. If you're doing wet food, once again, we get faulty tabs, so make sure you have your manual can opener just in case. And we have our blanket with all those lovely smells from home as well as our toys. And instead of a litter in a litter box, we have our pet waste bags. Always pack spare bags. Um, just in case you have to clean up other things besides pet waste. It comes really in handy. And then once again, our dog I'm sure is collared with tags. We have our spare, spare collar, spare tag with our phone number on it and a spare leash. The one additional thing we have is a headlamp because if the power's out or you're having to take your dog for a walk at night, I don't want you to fall. So headlamp, definitely pack that for your dog scent. And then medication, so same reminder. And then things that go with your medication, if you need a pill cutter, things like that, put them all together. And one more addition besides the pee pads, because remember you can never have too many, very diverse, is a muzzle. I'm not saying your dog requires a muzzle. I'm just saying if your dog is maybe not very comfortable in new situations, this might be a good way to go, just to protect you and to protect those that you may be sharing a shelter with. Um, you don't want a tight muzzle because your dog might be wearing it for a little while, um, though you should give him breaks, don't keep it on all the time. Uh, but a muzzle might be a good idea for you to go just to make sure. Um, definitely don't wanna to have to worry about dog bites. And keep in mind, if your pet has other needs, um, like a thunder shirt, if your dog is really uncomfortable in storms and maybe you're evacuating because of a hurricane, pack the thunder shirt. We're trying to make the animals comfortable in a location that they're not familiar with in a situation that's highly stressful and as much water as you can. So these are really the basics. Um, we're gonna give you a list of add-ons and things like that and help you so you don't have to remember everything here but I do want to share some extra things. So if you want to advance your go bag a little bit more, consider a first aid kit for your pet and we'll throw in a link that gives you items that you could pack with that. Uh, consider nail clippers. Um, sometimes, you know, you might get kind of like a hangnail situation or something like that and these are really good to keep your um, pet from being injured. So cat and dog version. Once again, going for that comfort. So calming sprays. We've got Sentry and Feel Away here. Um, you can spray it in the carrier or on a towel. Um, these are really nice. They're, it varies, they're not 100%. Your animal may not find them to be calming, but a lot of animals do. Um, so this is a really good idea. Once again, going back to walking your dog at night, I really like these. They're just little lights that you can put on the collar. And it lights up. So. You know, hopefully that leash doesn't break or the dog doesn't get loose, but 
This will just help you if it's dark outside. Next is shampoo. You know, sometimes if there's debris or dust or smoke or things like that and you need to do a quick bath, I like using Dawn just because I can use it on my dog and cat and I don't have to pack two bottles of shampoo, I can just pack one. And if you are, pack a towel as well. Another bonus is um, ASPCA gives these away for free and will include the link. And so you can actually post this on your house, um, whether you put it in a window or I've got mine thumbtacked against the wall of my house by my door because my windows don't allow for this. Um, it just lets people know how many animals are in your house in case there is maybe a fire or something like that. Um, they'll get a good idea of what they're looking for. So these are kind of bonus items and there's a lot more stuff you can put in here, but I wanted to give you the basics. So what are we gonna put the animal in? That's our last question, right? So if you have a cat or a small dog, you might wanna go with a soft-sided carrier. Um, benefits is it's light, it has really good ventilation, um, and you know you can actually store your go bag in here. Don't store the items in here because then you'd have to dump them out to put your animal in. But you could store the bag that this is in your carrier. The other option is a hard carrier. This is my preference. Um, I say this only because it has a little bit more of a defined shape. So if you're putting a litter box in here or things like that, um, you don't have to worry about it shifting or maybe spilling. Also, sometimes when you're in a crowd of a lot of people um, that are either panicked or trying to get out of the weather and you're getting bumped a lot, this isn't going to rattle your pet as much as getting kind of squished in a soft cover. So this is my preference, um, but the soft covers work just as well to bring your animal over. And then for, you can use this for cats or for dogs, is the pop-up wire crate. So that hardcover crate, if you're bringing a big hound dog, things like that, that's a big crate for you to store in your home. Um, I leave mine outside the house, under the house actually. Um, so that is one option, but it is quite bulky. So this is nice because it folds down and it folds down to this um, width for any size that you get. And you can upgrade this to however big your animal is. Um, and I really like it because then you can also um, attach things to it like bowls. So this is a really nice option. So just to review, you're gonna pack your basics, but you're first going to microchip, you're gonna vaccinate, and you're gonna get a buddy. And then worst case scenario, if you forget it all, just grab your animal, Call us, we're gonna help you with whatever supplies we can get. If you have a cat and you can't get it in a carrier and you can't get your stuff together, wrap it in a towel, I don't want you to get scratched, or you can put it in a pillowcase, like a cotton one or a linen one. It's not the best situation by all, that should be a very last resort, but it is an option if it came to it. But it's not going to because you're gonna be prepared with your new pet kit. So, that's everything from me. Like I said, we're gonna put all the links in our comment section so you can review the list, you can look at bigger lists, you can order your ASPCA sticker about how many pets are in your home. Um, but yeah, are there any questions in the comment section? Yes. Uh, where does my pet go in case of an emergency? Great, so depending on what kind of emergency is, and the timing of the emergency, so is it before the hurricane, is it after the hurricane, can vary. So for Kauai specifically, you can find out the sheltering locations at Kauai Emergency Management Agency, or Kima, and they have a list. And thankfully, most of our sheltering options are pet friendly. Um, but they want you to come prepared because they're not bringing pet supplies necessarily. So you need to bring the pet supplies that you need. Um, so once again, have your go bag ready, have it by the door. Um, the one thing I do wanna mention is we're packing food, right? So this food sitting in this bag for a year is not great. So what I like to do is when I pour a new bag of food, I fill up my go bag food. And when I get to the end of that bag, 
I use my go bag food and then I fill it up again with the new bag of food that I'm replenishing with. So that way you're also replenishing your go bag food. And it's just an easy way to remember that so you don't get stale food or you don't have to worry about the food going moldy because thankfully you never had to grab your go bag in a year. Um, but we wanna make sure that we're bringing the right supplies with us. I've got a question. Yes. Does the Aquatic Humane Society act as an emergency shelter? So we are not an emergency shelter, um, just structurally. We don't meet the qualifications. What we will be doing is housing our animals and then helping where we can. So we have a memorandum of understanding with the Red Cross to help when their humans are sheltering so we can help with their pets. Um, and we're here to help you as well. But for emergencies, for your stress, for your pet stress, we really would like you guys to house together. Um, and no matter what the emergency is, if you are evacuating to a shelter, take your pet with you. So the, shelter, the disaster you're dealing with at the moment may not be the disaster you're dealing with later. So if you have a hurricane come through and that's what you're prepared for and you're like, you know what, my bathroom is great, I'm gonna put my cat in the bathroom, that's not wrong, but after the hurricane, maybe there are trees down and you can't get back to your cat because the road is blocked. Or maybe there are down power lines and we're having a fire. So if you are evacuating, take your pets with you. Don't leave them at the house. Okay, well, thank you so much for joining. I hope this was helpful and I hope you feel more prepared for the future.